and welcome. My name is Nancy Oakley. I'm your Education Events Manager here at Citrus Valley Association of Realtors. Uh, first, you are here for Reverse Mortgage Educators Rev Up Your Listings in Reverse. This is the educational class. Let me go ahead and turn it over to Crystal with Reverse Mortgage Educators. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Nancy. And just to reiterate, yes, we are taking questions. Since this is a one hour live stream, uh, we'll accept you know all incoming questions, of course, but we'll take time specifically to answer them at 1.30 and then at uh, near the end of the class around two o'clock. I also want to let you guys know that this is actually a three hour session that we will usually do in person at Citrus Valley Association of Realtors but we're doing it in one hour in the live stream. So there's a lot of information that's going to um, come up. Um, I would like for a lot of you to get this PowerPoint over to you guys. Um, if you want a copy of this PowerPoint, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my email in the group chat and please go ahead and you can email me directly and I'll send you this PowerPoint during the live stream as well. I also encourage you guys to stay until the very end because we'll be talking about different complementary softwares and marketing materials that you can take advantage of to really get in that listing along with the information that you're receiving today. Well, that being said, um, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan and Robert now. Okay, everybody. So we're going to get started because we've got three hours. We're going to pack into one hour and uh, want to get you all the information we can. So let's just go ahead and hit our first slide, Rob. So why we're here today is to build a menu or go over three things that Rob and I have seen over the past 10 years that realtors can do to make a reverse mortgage help your business. That's right. Not the refinance, but something that will help you if a client's asking about a reverse. So let's jump into that. Here's our first thing that we want you to take in today. Clients are gonna ask about reverse mortgages. They're on the TV, they're getting mail. Somebody has one, they've heard about them. They saw them in the newspaper. Whatever it may be, we know that they're asking realtors about them because we get a lot of calls from realtors saying, my client asked about a reverse. Well, there's something we definitely want you to know in that, a client that's calling for a reverse mortgage, first of all, they don't really want a reverse mortgage. That's just something that they think will help them with the problem. The problem is that they may be short on cash or retirement savings and have a home with equity. So when someone says I want to reverse, just know that really what they're saying is I'm kind of tight on cash and I own a home. So your ears should perk up. Now here's the second part of that. You know, probably only about half to maybe 40% of the people that come to us for reverse end up getting one. They either don't qualify or they're not getting enough money or something happens where they don't get that loan. So if 50 to 60% of the people that ask you about a reverse don't get one, then what do you have? You have a client telling you, I'm having a hard time with this house. I might be short on cash. I might, what? Then they might end up selling it. So... When someone asks you a reverse, you got to think, hmm, I need to stay in this conversation for a minute. I need to make sure I don't think this is not for me because a lot, many clients end up coming back to you after they don't get the reverse to sell the home. So what we want to do in our next slide is we're going to show you how to handle it when someone asks about a reverse. So that way you can sound educated and get some information. Bullet point number one. Someone's asking for a reverse, that's you too, your business. Number two, there are a lot of homeowners that maybe already know they need to move. Maybe they've been thinking about moving. Maybe they know that they're barely making this house. Maybe the house is not what it used to be. Downsizing, <clears throat> all kinds of reasons that older homeowners are moving, which by the way, National Association of Realtors did a study 2019, 54% of the people selling homes right now are 55 and older. So. We know that older homeowners are moving. Now, let's talk about one of the reasons why they may not be listing with you even though they need to move. Because they can't get financing to buy their next home. Low income in retirement, maybe the loan that they want to get to buy their next home, the payment's going to be too high. Maybe they're trying to get rid of a payment. So they're having loan issues. Well, a reverse mortgage for purchase loan, not refinance, but purchase 
is a loan that they can get maybe when they can't get any other loan. We can qualify people for reverse purchase maybe when they can't get any other type of financing. And that's great because what you're gonna learn on the next slide is if you buy a home with a reverse mortgage, it makes your mortgage payment optional. Rob will talk about that in a minute. So that's bullet point number two. There are homeowners, they would list. You just need to know that there is a loan out there that will help them buy their next home. Finally, the third thing that we can watch out for that could help your business is there are a lot of homes out there. They already have reverse mortgages on there. Maybe you know somebody has a reverse. Maybe somebody in your area, in your neighborhood has a reverse. Guess what? Eventually we're all gonna pass away. So they're no different. They have a reverse mortgage. I can tell you what, a lot of people that have reverses and their heirs have no idea what happens with that home when they pass away. Well, you're gonna to learn today that you can handle it almost like a regular sale. So where the opportunity is for you is if you're coming across somebody has a reverse, you know somebody, you find somebody right in your neighborhood, you need to let them know that you have been specially trained to help people sell homes that have reverse mortgages. You can build yourself a little forward pipeline as long as the heirs know when something does happen, I need to get back a hold of Patty. I need to get back a hold of John because I know that they know how to handle this reverse mortgage when mom and dad pass away or when aunt and uncle pass away and I become the recipient. There are some things that they have to do to be able to get control of that home and you can be the answer for them. So that's the third way that a reverse mortgage can actually bring you business. So Rob, let's go and start with that bullet point number one of what happens when a client's asking them about a reverse how are they going to know what to say? How does the thing work? Absolutely. Okay, so <clears throat> this test this ties right into bullet one, like Ryan just said. So you're going to get questions about reverse mortgages um, just because what Ryan said about how they're on the TV, they're in the papers, they're on radio, right? All these advertisements for reverse mortgages. So your, your customers or your farm or the people in your sphere are going to ask you, hey, I saw this thing on TV and how does this thing work? Do you know anything about reverse mortgages? And we want you to be able to answer that with a, with a fairly easy answer so that way you can explain it. Basically, here's a reverse mortgage. A reverse mortgage is like any other loan out there, right? The difference is the payment that you have is optional. There is no monthly mortgage payments on a reverse mortgage, but you can elect to make a payment on it or pay a, a portion of it to control how the loan defers interest over your lifetime. So let's compare it to a regular mortgage, a reverse mortgage. Every month you get a monthly mortgage statement and on that statement, it's going to show you what's owed. It's going to show you the, the costs for that month, interest and mortgage insurance. And if you do nothing at that point in time with the loan and just let it do its thing, you're going to owe the costs of that month on the next mortgage statement. It's going to show you a higher balance, right? Because you're deferring it. So that's basically how reverse mortgage works. But some people actually decide to make a payment on these loans and you can do that. And the reason why you can is because there's no prepayment penalties on these loans, which means you're free to prepay anytime you want for any amount. So in essence, a reverse mortgage is like the loan you have now, except the payment that you have to make every month, you don't have to. You can choose not to and just defer it to the mortgage balance. So that's one way to explain how a reverse mortgage works. Here's something that Ryan and I have also learned over the years. A lot of clients are concerned about, hey, if I get a reverse mortgage, is there something going to happen in the future? Will I get a phone call saying that I have to make payments? Will they kick me out of the house? Will something happen like that? And here's the deal. With these FHA reverse mortgages, you don't never have to, you never have to make a payment your entire life. And they'll never do anything that will disrupt your living style, the roof over your head. You're always guaranteed to live there for, for the rest of your life, despite the balance of the loan, despite the market conditions around you, despite the value of your property. That's the guarantee that you get by the FHA reverse mortgage that you can stay in that loan for the rest of your life without making a monthly mortgage payment. So that's what makes the loan really attractive, really uh, attractive to most older homeowners. But that's a, that's a very good strategy for a lot of folks to not have a monthly mortgage payment. But like, remember, some people can still make that payment if they decide to. And that's the key we want to show you is that these loans have control features over them to ensure that there's equity in the home down the road. Now, the reverse mortgage refinance has been the predominant product since the beginning of time. In other words, 
back to the late 80s and all the way up till 2009, this loan was only available in a refinance product, which means that, like Ryan was saying earlier, somebody has a, 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 some tight income at home, some, some retirement issues, and they're struggling making that mortgage payment or living in that property. They can simply just call up a reverse mortgage company and say, hey, I want to get a reverse mortgage. Therefore, you can eliminate my monthly mortgage payment. And that is a solution, right? But what did that just do? Basically, if there was no reverse mortgage, that might have ended up a listing, right? And, and you guys, the realtors, might have gotten a listing out of that. So all the way up until 2009, this, this product was only available in a refinance. And then here comes 2009. FHA, HUD, they announced this product as a purchase loan. So now Ryan and I can start to talk to agents about this loan and how we can help transition their customers from the house they're living in for a long time to a more suitable home for retirement. And a lot of those transactions, transactions that were done in the past that were on the refinance, maybe selling and repurchasing a home was a better option for them, right? So 2009 came along, fast forward to today, and I would say probably a good chunk, if not half of our pipeline in our company is reverse mortgage for purchase, which means that the agents are getting the listing and the buying opportunity on that transaction. So very powerful that this loan became a purchase. Now, so a lot of times, Clients try to get other loans. They try to get regular 30-year fixed mortgages, 15-year loans, what have you. Qualifying for those types of loans is very difficult when you're on a fixed income, especially Social Security, which you're going to find out what the average Social Security check is nationwide. But to qualify for traditional financing is very difficult. The fact that they can qualify for this reverse mortgage, either refinance or purchase, based on a low FICO score, based on a fixed income, makes the loan highly sought after. People are starting to understand that, hey, I can qualify for this loan and I can make payments on it. So why not just treat it like a regular loan? Well, they can. And that's the beauty of it, right? So the fact that people can qualify for a reverse mortgage as opposed to a regular mortgage makes the loan have its legs, ultimately. Here's something that Ryan and I have definitely learned over the past few years of dealing with real estate agents and their customers. A lot of clients that realtors are talking to, or even that we're talking to, will never want to sell their property. In other words, I'm staying here the rest of my life no matter what. But meanwhile, going on in the background with that particular prospect, maybe they're spending down a cash asset. Maybe they're having some issues keeping the house maintained, making the mortgage payment. We know the signs are there. We see them. We know the numbers are there. So there's a lot of homeowners that are in their houses trying to stay afloat when maybe they ought to just sell the property and get to a better property. So after a meeting with the clients, typically Ryan and I will run a budget with them. We'll go through all the numbers, their income, what they're expending, what the housing expenses are, et cetera, et cetera. And more times than not, when you get to that final number, they're at a deficit. So that means that this house is probably not the best house for them, especially because it has a mortgage payment on it. So that's when, we start to talk about the reverse purchase and introducing that idea and how they can retain more cash after they sell this home to get into a better situation. And that usually shores up their finances and they can live in that house, a new house comfortably. Now, of course, like we said earlier regarding bullet number one, you guys are going to get questions about reverse mortgages. So we want to give you a little bit of idea how the reverse mortgage refinance works. I'll give you an example. Let's say we got a 62 year old borrower and their house is worth $600,000. And maybe they qualify for $300,000, which is 50%. And maybe they only owe $100,000 on their current mortgage. And they're doing this because they want to get rid of their mortgage payment and maybe access some equity. Well, they get their $300,000 loan, reverse mortgage. We pay off the hundred they already owe. Problem solved right there. Reverse mortgage, their payment is now eliminated or becomes optional. But remember, they qualified for 300, which means they got 200 extra, right? This is the money where you've heard of people getting like a monthly check sent to them every single month for, for any amount they wish, or getting lump sum distributions, or even setting up a line of credit. This is how a reverse mortgage can be done. The line of credit feature is a pretty interesting feature when it comes to a reverse mortgage, and here's why. Whatever money that you don't borrow doesn't become part of your balance. So you're saving on monthly mortgage interest, which is great. Um, the money that's sitting there is available to you anytime. You can make distributions whenever you need to for whatever need, which is great. And while the money's sitting there, they actually grow the money for you. They unleash more equity for you to be drawn upon if you ever need to. And that's despite the market values. So if the market values are crashing, we're in a recession, 
That line of credit can never be frozen and they will continue to grow available proceeds for you as the years go by. So the line of credit is probably the best option when it comes to reverse mortgages because you're using the product conservatively, deferring less interest because you're not borrowing all the money and you're taking it as you need it and you get that growth rate despite the market conditions around you. So we want you to know a little bit about that because it's important. You're gonna get questions about the reverse mortgage refinance as well as the purchase. Let's jump back into the purchase real quick here or just in a reverse mortgage in general. So with a reverse mortgage, one thing you have to know is that this is an owner occupied loan. In other words, you can't get a reverse mortgage on a second home, an investment property or rental. It's gotta be the home where you live in as your primary residence. Now, of course, with reverse mortgages, we can lend on single family residences. We can lend on condos. If the condominium complex is already FHA approved, that's great. If it's not, then we can seek for what we call a single unit approval, which requires some underwriting, but not as heavy as the traditional full community approval. And then as far as a one to four unit, this is an option as well. You can buy a one to four unit property, live in one of the units, collect rent on the other units and not make a monthly mortgage payment and start to generate more revenue for retirement. So there's lots of great strategies on how to use a reverse mortgage. So just keep your eyes open out there. There's a lot of folks that are asking about this product and, and want to use this as a purchase loan. Ryan, anything you want to add? No, I'll just basically kind of sum up what you said, Rob, is that the reverse mortgage, it's a loan, much like a regular loan. You borrow money to refinance, you borrow money to buy a home. What makes it special and why some people like it is it can help somebody control their cash flow in retirement. You see, not everybody is going to want to get a reverse and never make another payment because they're going to say, wow, my balance could really go up over the years, 10, 20 years. It could. So if you don't like that, maybe you just make a payment six months out of the year. That'll help control your balance. Yet it's still giving you the power to be able to one day say, man, I can't afford to make any payments anymore and nothing will happen to me. I won't get a call. I won't get a letter. They just will simply add the interest that I would have paid onto the loan. And we do that for the rest of my life and I'm safe. So the power in the loan is that the client actually controls it. We just don't market it. Most companies, and it just hasn't been known that you can do that. But the client every month is in control. Do I want to send anything in? Nope. Cool. I just made my mortgage reverse this month. Next month, maybe I have something to send in. I won't reverse it. Maybe I get half. Cash flow and control of it in retirement is a big deal. And that's simply what this loan does. So let's get to an example of how a client could actually purchase because maybe they're not going to refinance. This is one of those clients who ultimately couldn't refinance or decided that a refinance of reverse wasn't for them. Now they're going to sell and you're going to help them buy their next home. Here we go. First thing we want to see, age. Why do we want to know age? Our loan amounts are based on how old you are and the purchase price of the home. So we're always gonna ask somebody's age. And by the way, every age is different. So there's a graph, there's a chart. You can't memorize it because it changes. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But in this case, we have a 73 year old borrower. They've contacted you, you've come across them. They figure out that this home that they're in, they need to sell. So let's say that home sells for 850. You have sold their home. They've had to pay off the loan they had on the house, plus the cost of selling the house means that they now, in this case, they have 400,000. And they've said to you, look, 400,000. And by the way, this is most cases Rob's, Rob and I see. I have 400,000, it's the only money I have. I need a roof over my head for the rest of my life, which could easily, in this case, be 17 years. And I need money in the bank. All I have is 400,000. Realtor, how am I gonna do that? Well, let's see, let's find out what a suitable replacement home is gonna cost first. In this case, it was 600,000. Well, they only got 400,000. So right away paying cash is off the table. Also, in this case, if they were to put 400 down and get a $200,000 loan, maybe they're back in the same boat. They have a mortgage payment, they got no money in the bank. So that doesn't work either. So now a reverse purchase might work. Well, at 73 years old, if they're gonna buy a $600,000 home, I would tell them, you need to put down 259. We will give you a loan for 341, which means you get to keep 141,000 in the bank. What have we done here? We've taken somebody that was in a home where they had a payment, no cash in the bank, 
maybe barely squeezing by. You've helped them buy a home. We've made their monthly mortgage payment optional. And we've put 141,000 in the bank. That is a game changer in retirement. So what's the first thing we say about the optional payment? We haven't forced anybody into reverse. We've just given them the opportunity where if they're tight for a few months and they don't send a payment in, nothing happens. They just have that interest added on. Okay, but you know what? Maybe that three months they didn't make a payment was it was so important because if they miss three months on a regular mortgage, they're in foreclosure. Here, they just missed three months, no big deal. And that may be all they miss. What a change in security. So that is what is cool. Now, also, without that payment, that extra money they can use on spending on things, and they got 141 sitting there in a big emergency fund. And also on this loan, remember we've said that you may get this loan when you can't get anything else? I don't care what the FICO score was. I really didn't. By the way, income. We're much easier on income. You could get this loan, this particular loan here, maybe you need $1,700, $1,800 month social security income, something of that nature. So that type of income would never get a regular loan of 341. So again, qualify. Now I'm not saying that these loans are just easy to get done, that Rob and I just like a factory. But what I'm telling you is that even though we do have to do a lot of work to get them done, you can get them done when another loan would never happen. So this is a downsizing scenario. We see this type of scenario quite a bit. It's usually downsizing and it's really making a change in a homeowner's life. Now we're gonna to jump to one more slide and then we'll get to some questions if there's some questions. So when we're writing up, when, when you find a client and they're gonna sell their home, we wanna make sure before you sell that home of theirs and we know they can get this loan. That's why we wanna pre-underwrite this loan. We don't have any automated underwriting engines in our industry. We have to manually underwrite every single loan. So we like to do that before you've even sold their home. That way it makes it much easier. That way we could do a 30 day extra on their next home instead of a 70 day escrow, something crazy because all the work in our loans are really done up front. It makes a huge difference. Pre-underwrite, very important. Also, clients gonna have to get counsel. So in other words, the government has a list. We give the client the list. It's a list where they call a counselor and the counselor says, we wanna make sure that you understand how the loan works, et cetera, et cetera. It takes about 40 minutes to an hour on the phone and they have to get counsel before we can order an appraisal. Now, if, we, if the client's getting up correctly for success during pre-underwrite, they're getting counseled. Also, we can't give any seller concessions or credits. Just buyers gotta pay for their half of uh, closing, sellers gotta pay for their half. Seller can't say, oh, there's a bunch of termite damage. I'll just give you four grand to cover costs, stuff like that's not gonna happen. So no credits or concessions. You can ask us more about that when you find a transaction. A mandatory escape clause, this is part of FHA forms. Uh, we do need this eventually signed before escrow closes. Here's the idea. When you're gonna find somebody and we think that this is a good transaction, we're gonna get all this done and help make sure that you get a contract set up properly and everything goes smoothly because we do have these little idiosyncrasies and reverses that need to be done to make sure you have a smooth escrow. So that's why you should just call us and say, I think I got something here and then we can help you the rest of the way. All right, let's get into some questions. Uh, we got any questions that we need answered, Crystal? Oh. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I can't unmute myself, so Rob's gotta do it for me. Yes, we do have a couple questions. Let's go through them. So first question from Roshana is, I know somebody who has a reverse mortgage currently, they're over 80 years old and they're looking at selling their home to granddaughter to move in and aid with care. What should they consider in the sale to a family member, Ryan? Okay, so the first question is, I'm wondering why they wanna to sell to the, the granddaughter, um, I guess, unless they want, because you know, the granddaughter could just move in and if they're concerned about you know the reverse stacking up interest, they could just start making payments on the reverse that's there instead of trying to you know handle everything right away. But if they do want to get the home to the granddaughter, now they don't necessarily have to sell it to the granddaughter per se. Uh, the granddaughter can take ownership, but as a reverse, we're not really getting involved with like how they're taking title or how the daughter is getting that granddaughter is getting that house or what they're doing. The reverse just wants to be paid off. Here, here's the cash reverse and reverse comes off title. So we don't control that part of it. That's still part of the estate planning 
part of the family members, what they want to do. We get paid off, we get paid off, and that's it. Okay, great. Next question from Sandra is, how much is the percentage that they need to put down in the purchase of a home on a reverse mortgage for purchase? So um, I'm actually, um, quickly say, we do have a calculator um, that can help you with determining what the down payment is, but the down payment really depends, first of all, on the age of the borrowers, or borrower, and then two is, well, what is the purchase price of their home? But we'll get into that later on. So next question that we're gonna move on to is from Don. How does the interest rate compare to a traditional loan? Robert, do you wanna answer that one? Sure, um, just like the uh, traditional land, uh, lending landscape, we have an adjustable and we have a fixed. And we also have a non-FHA reverse mortgage as well. So let's start with the adjustable. Those rates are about two and a half to 3%. Uh, the fixed product is about three and a half to 4%. And then the jumbo products, which usually do houses higher valued from 850 and on, those, pro those uh, interest rates range from 4.99 all the way up to 7.125%. Uh, the reason why they have higher interest rates is because there's no FHA insurance on those loans. But Predominantly, the FHA product is the one that's being utilized. That's the one that has the lower adjustable, which is, like I said, about two and a half to three, and the fixed at about 3.6%. Okay, thank you, Rob. The next question we have from Rich is, um, same question I always ask, can they use uh, a reverse mortgage refinance for an ADU, Ryan? Okay, that's a very interesting question. Um, I want to hit one back thing for Roshana for you real quick. Rashawn, you should check out to see how the title's held, if that grandmother has it, her name only, because if something happens to her, of course, that could end up being a probate situation. So that's part of the service you can perform, of course, is pull title, recommend they put it in a trust if they're not going to transfer to the granddaughter. So there's some great opportunity for you to be in there and then make sure you get to handle that transaction. Okay. Oh, it's in a trust. Okay. All right. So ADU, right? If you have a reverse already and you're going to do an ADU, you need to be cautious with that because one of the things when you get a reverse is that you're not supposed to do major changes to the house that could change it's how it's valued so doing an adu after you get the loan be careful with that now if you're going to refinance with the reverse to pull the cash out to do the adu i'd certainly check with before you fund and i've done this before i make sure whoever's servicing the loan I ask them, I say, look, they're gonna do some improvements to the house. What do you guys want to see to make sure that they won't end up violating any terms of the note with what they're gonna do? I mean, right, because maybe an ADU is just converting a room, but what if you convert a garage, there's no covered parking? Well, now you could be messing with zoning. What if you added four stories onto this house and all of a sudden, right? So you see how you can make some drastic changes that could convert the saleability of a property. And that's what FHA is concerned with. Can you have an ADU with reverse? Yes. Does it have to be done properly? Yes. So before that loan is done, like for instance, if we were doing the loan, I'd be doing a lot of homework before we ever went down the road to getting the reverse to make sure everything works out well. So Rich, I hope that answered your question. In addition to that, and of course, if, the, if you get approval to do an ADU, you can use the reverse mortgage proceeds to pay for the construction project, of course. Thank you, Rob. Yes. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Rob and Ryan. Um, last question for now from Guadalupe. What happens with one of the if with the couples die, um, and their survivor continues to receive money for a home? Now we do have a slide that covers what happens after with the reverse mortgage. But Rob, did you want to hit on something specifically with this question? Yeah. So if 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 you have two borrowers, like a married couple on a reverse mortgage, and one borrower passes away, and the other one's still living and occupying the home, the loan remains it's normal course. They can still receive their money and get access to the available proceeds and all that stuff. So it's only when all borrowers on the loan pass away, does the loan become due and payable and they have six months to figure out, or the heirs do rather how, when they want to sell the property, if they want to refi it or sell it. And then if they can't get it done in six months, they can file two, three month extensions, which we'll be covering here in just a bit. Yeah, perfect. Um, actually, last question from Dugan. Um, Rob, you can answer this, I guess. Uh, do existing reverse mortgages holders do, uh, have the option to pay? Or is, there, is that something that happened recently with the newer programs? Uh, of course, they whatever reverse mortgage is in place now, they can make payments on it. They started doing that. 
And maybe they want to do that because they want to control the equity for some other strategy they want to do, maybe sell it down the road or something like that, for sure. Yeah, and, and to add to that, Rob, I would just say you want to find your original loan documentation and make sure the loan has no prepayment penalties. That's how you know that you could send money in you know, prematurely, et cetera. Perfect, thank you, Ryan. Um, perfect, so I actually, I'm gonna turn it over to Rob here in just a bit. Just wanna really reiterate quickly, um, some of you guys did email me, I get that. I got that PowerPoint out to you guys immediately. So just double check and see if that's in your inbox. For those of you who haven't emailed me yet, please go ahead and email me if you want to copy of this PowerPoint and or if you want to enter our $25 Amazon gift card giveaway. So we're only doing this for the duration of the class. So just send me an email. It's pretty easy. Enter that giveaway and you know, see if you're the lucky winner. All right, Rob, I'm handing it back to you. All righty. Thank you, Crystal. All right, so just want to show you uh, what's going on with our with our older generation, our our baby boomers, um, and just as we, before we get into this little slide here, this isn't about our boomers. It's it's about every demographic, really. My Gen X uh, generation, generations before me, we're all doing a kind of a poor job of saving money for retirement. It's it's very difficult in today's environment to save and work and have children. So. Um, the difference obviously being that an older person is either retired or approaching retirement and they have less time to make up for any kind of possible shortfall. So here's what's going on with our boomers out there. We got 10,000 boomers every single day turning 65 and that'll continue to 2030. So that's a lot of people turning the age for retirement that could use reverse mortgages that may want to downsize a lot of people. We got 80 million boomers in the country. If you factor their parents, it's, it's north of 100 million people that have uh, that are that are retired. There's a lot of folks out there. Half of our baby boomers, or close to half, have no retirement savings in retirement. The other half have some retirement savings, and then a small percentage of those have less than 100 grand saved in retirement. So what does that mean exactly? Well, that means that a lot of our retirees are living on Social Security alone, and that average Social Security check nationwide is 1461. So if you think about it, having a mortgage payment with a fixed income like 1461 a month, taxes, insurance, maintenance on the property, groceries in the refrigerator, maybe a car payment, it, that, that dollar is not going to go very far in retirement. So that's what they're looking. They're trying to figure out that issue. How do I solve this problem? Do I get a reverse mortgage and stay? But remember, a lot of people don't qualify to stay. They have to sell. So that's where the reverse purchase could come in and solve that issue as well. And again, the fact that a lot of our older generation does not have um, – uh, enough retirement savings didn't necessarily, isn't their fault necessarily. It also has to do with the fact that a lot of the big corporations back in the day removed the pension plans, which pulled their income. Then they had to, the employee themselves had to fund their own retirement, which is difficult, obviously. By the time you get down to the end of the month and you spend all your money, you're like, I got nothing left to save, right? It's tough out there. But uh, one thing the boomers did correctly, they did it awesome they bought houses and they paid their mortgages down. They held on to those homes. Home ownership pride is, is, is probably one of the best things to have in this country. And along with that, with our older generation, 65 and older, we got over 7 trillion in homeowner equity out there amongst our 65 plus community. That is a lot of equity. The challenge becomes how do they access that equity safely? Um, they can use a reverse mortgage, of course, they can sell. There's all kinds of things they can do, but the key is to access it safely and make it sustainable for the rest of their life in retirement. So that is more upon you guys as realtors. Realtors deal with homes and home equity all the time. You guys are gonna to need to help these people transition to the right strategy or right endpoint to make their retirement better, along with folks like Ryan and I who do reverse mortgages. So we're kind of in synergy together, if you will. Um, let's talk about, uh, what happens with a reverse mortgage? Now, this whole slide is really about that bullet number three, right? We're talking about how to insert yourself into the conversations of a family that may have parents or like Ryan said, an aunt and uncle that have a reverse mortgage. They're still living, they're older, and you guys want to be talking to them and talking to the heirs or anybody around them to make sure that they know that you are the expert on what happens with the house after all borrowers have passed away. And this is how you guys can roll this out to them. So there's two likely outcomes. Either the house has equity or it doesn't have equity. Above water, meaning positive equity. Underwater, meaning negative equity. Let's go over the first example with positive equity. Let's say we have a home value of $600,000. 
and we got a reverse mortgage balance of $400,000. The borrowers on the loan have passed away, and now the heirs are asking you, what happens in this situation here? Well, for the heirs, it's pretty simple. If they want to keep the house, you can explain this to them. You got to pay off the loan because it was only meant for the borrowers that are now deceased. So you can do that by either A, refinancing the home into a different loan or pay it off with cash or a combination of the two, and you can keep the home and the equity. If they don't want to do that, then you can say, look, the next option, and this will be you guys speaking as a realtor. The next option is you can list the house with me and I will go ahead and list it for market value and whatever it comes in at or whatever it sells for, we pay off the reverse and whatever's left in equity goes to the heirs or the estate. And that would be you guys listing the house as a regular standard equity sell. So that's how a reverse mortgage can work in an above water situation. And by the way, number two, it's also available for the borrowers. FHA reverse mortgages do not have prepayment penalties, which means that the borrowers can sell the house at any point in time during the loan, sell it, get their equity and go do something else with it, okay? So that's an above water situation. Let's move over to the underwater situation. Let's say we have a home value of $300,000 and now we have the same balance of 400,000. As you can see here, we are $100,000 upside down underwater. Here's the heirs options. And you can explain this to the heirs. If we want to keep the house, what are our options? And then you can simply say, hey, the balance is 400,000, the home value is 300. The payoff of the loan, if you want to keep it, is going to be 95% of whatever the market value is. So 95% of 300 is 285. That's your payoff to keep the home. The heirs might respond and go, well, wait a second here, there's $115,000 extra owed in the loan. What happens to that? Well, FHA pays an insurance claim to the original lender and pays them off in whole, and everybody's free to go about their way at that point in time. There's no like weird deficiency judgments or any kind of strange 1099s that are going to show up. The insurance on the loan, the FHA insurance covers the loss for the lender. The other option for the heirs is they can simply do nothing. They can say, I appreciate the 95% rule. We don't want to take advantage of it. We're going to walk away. And that's fine. It's a non-recourse loan federally. And then in the state of California, of course, we're a non-recourse state. So they could walk away. And even if the, the deceased owned other properties or houses or cars or whatnot, cash in the bank, it's all untouchable. The FHA and the lender will deal with the, with the asset at hand through a regular standard California foreclosure. The last thing they, that you can uh, you know, let the heirs know is that, hey, if you guys don't want to see this thing to go to foreclosure, or you don't want to take advantage of the 95% rule, I can go ahead and short sell it for you. And it makes sense because the short sales, I think are in the best interest of FHA. And here's why, this may be my opinion, but when a house goes to full market on the MLS, then it's going to sell for higher typically rather than at an auction. And that might be a lesser insurance claim that FHA has to pay out in the long run, which is great. So these are the rules that you guys can explain to those customers that you may know that have a reverse mortgage in place now, and you're communicating this with the heirs and the borrowers themselves so they understand the exit strategies, and you're there at some point in time to probably handle the listing if it comes to fruition. Ryan, anything you want to add? Let's hop over, Rob. All right, here we go. We're going to breeze through these pretty quick here. Um, these are a lot of the myths that are out there in the marketplace. I just want to make sure you guys understand them. Um, a lot of times borrowers or homeowners may think that the government or bank owns the house with when you have a reverse mortgage. And this is not the case. It's just like a regular loan. It's a lien on title and you are the owner of the property or the trust that you have. Um, some people believe that if the house appreciates in value over the years that it's not their appreciation. Um, any appreciation that happens to the home with a reverse mortgage belongs to the estate or the heirs. Sometimes people may think that when I pass away, I, my heirs can inherit the property. Uh, they certainly can. Um, obviously, the best way to do it is try, to try to avoid probate. There's many ways to try to avoid probate, but the best probably way is to have the house vested in trust. Because the last thing we want to see is a house in probate with a reverse mortgage going and possibly going into foreclosure. So we want to make sure those houses are titled properly. And the last one. Um, sometimes, you know, we can be in a bad recession or have a, a bad market and the loan balance can be higher than the, uh, than the actual value of the property. This happened in 2007. And some people might think that, hey, if my balance gets higher than my value, am I going to get a strange letter or a phone call saying that I need to sell the home or get out of it or pay it off? 
well, that's the rule that you get to live in the house the rest of your life as long as you abide by the rules of the mortgage, which we're going to cover right now. So a reverse mortgage does have, or, or borrowers rather, do have obligations. Uh, they must occupy the home as their primary residence, which we talked about. Sometimes the homeowners or the last remaining homeowner in the property may get dementia or Alzheimer's and need to get care outside the home. It's a possibility. So what we tell um, up front when we talk to borrowers that may fall down that and some down the road or be concerned about that, we say, look, if this is you and you think you might get this one day or you've had history of it, then here's how you handle it. If you go into a nursing facility for more than 12 months, the loan has to be paid off, which means either the house is sold or somebody else refinances out of the loan. If at that point in time, you're, you're able to get care back at home within 12 months of leaving it, the clock restarts and you're in good standing. So the rule is if you're outside for more than 12, the loan has to be paid off and you got to move on at that point in time. The next rule, paying the property taxes, homeowner's insurance, HOA fees. These have all got to be paid on time after you get the reverse to keep the loan in good standing. This was a huge problem in our industry years ago. Back in the past, we never verified income to make sure they can afford taxes, insurance on the property. Fast forward to 2015 till present, now we do, and this has solved that issue. And so those borrowers, if they default, it's usually something else going on financially that we're not aware of. Um, last but not least here, you gotta maintain the home to minimum FHA standards. What does that mean exactly? Well, when you got the loan originally, there was an FHA appraisal done on it. The FHA appraiser is there to do two things. One, to determine the value of the asset, and second, to make sure the house meets those standards. If the appraisal comes back and says it does, then the house is in good standing. If you keep it in that condition for the remaining of your life, you'll be in good shape, no problems. I usually don't see anybody getting into trouble with the whole maintenance thing. Usually, our defaults are due to someone passing away and the heirs never get in contact with the servicer and the servicer doesn't know how to handle it and they go into foreclosure and default. So usually death is the number one trigger of our defaults for the most part. Okay, moving on here, Ryan. All right, so remember I said, loan amount for reverse mortgage is based on age. Every age is different. How do we help you with that? We put a calculator together for you. You download it on your phone. Android users, go to your Play Store, Google Play Store. iPhone users, go to your App Store and put the age of the clients in, the purchase price, and guess what? We're gonna tell you what the down payment is and what the loan amount is. Now, a little trick here. Remember how we said there's a lot of clients who may not qualify or you know, they're gonna ask you about a reverse. And if you wanna kind of have an idea of what somebody could get on a refinance reverse mortgage, you can use the same purchase app. Here's what I'm talking about. When you download the app and you open it, you'll see purchase price. If they're looking at refinancing, Purchase price just means home value. Put the value in, put their ages in. It'll tell you what the loan amount's gonna be. It says loan amount. Don't worry about the down payment part. Well, if you put that in and you know somebody owes 400 and it says the loan amount they're gonna get is 350, you know that what? It's not gonna work for them. That house could be worth 700,000. It's still not gonna work because the loan amount doesn't cover what they owe. So what do you got there? Somebody who might need to sell. So even though this is a purchase app, it can help figure out refinances too. So the purchase app, again, put the ages in, purchase price, hit calculate. Now, here's something important. Years ago, we used to say, in order for a married couple to get a reverse, you both had to be 62. So what did people start doing? Oh, if I got a spouse that's younger, I'll just pull them off the loan and off the title of the home. They really weren't tricking FHA or tricking the lenders. It's just that we wouldn't stop them from doing it. The problem with that is that if you only have one person on title and on the loan and the older one that is on the loan passes away, the younger one, what? Had to sell the house or get a new loan. So we had some problems with that. There's people that still are holding loans like that. Well, FHA and HUD said, this is gonna change. If you were 62 or older, which we have to have one person 62 for the FHA reverse, and you have a younger spouse, we no longer want you messing around and pulling them off title. We'll let you put them on title, we'll consider them a non-borrowing spouse and we'll protect them that they can stay there the rest of their lives if the older one passes. 
So remember, we're based on age. So we're always going to look at the younger person. If you're 65 and you got a spouse 55, we're going to base on a 55, which means what? A lower loan amount. The younger you are, the less money you get on a reverse. Why? Well, if you think about it, since a reverse says if you don't want to make a payment, you don't have to. What if you're 55 years old and you get a reverse and you live 30 years? That's 30 years you haven't made a payment. We can't lend you all the money that the house is worth. It'd be upside down too quick. So the older then you become, when you get your reverse, the more we're able to lend you because your life expectancy is shorter, less time to not make payments. So married couples, pay attention. If you're unmarried, you can get a reverse mortgage with your neighbor, with anybody, brother, sister, you both got to be over 62, right? So this is important because you got to ask the people who you're in front of, make sure they're married. We've had couples who we thought they were married for a long time and we're taking the applications and doing everything. We find out they weren't married. We're like, oh, well, you guys behave just like a married couple and you know, all that good stuff, but they just happen to not be married. Fortunately, in most of those cases, they were over 62, but what if they weren't? Ooh, we don't want to do that. All right, so unmarried, let's all be over 62. Rob talked about a non-FHA reverse mortgage. A proprietary might be called, a private, a jumbo. They're kind of all kinds of things, but they're non-FHA. An FHA reverse mortgage has something called a maximum purchase price or max claim amount, which means that after the value of a home is over 765, 600, you can still get a reverse. You can still buy a home. You could buy a home with a $900,000. You could buy a $900,000 home with a reverse. But for FHA products, we're going to say, look, we're not going to lend you any more money just because you're buying a home over 765. So if we were going to give you $400,000 towards the purchase of a 765 home, we'll give you $400,000 towards the purchase of a $900,000 home. So it starts not to be less exciting when you're pushing that purchase price up. That's why the private industry kicked in and said, oh, FHA, if somebody has a million dollar home, you're only gonna lend them money based on 765. We think we can do better than that. So the private industry, they came out with the reverses and say, we'll take values up to 6 million and give people money based on higher values. So there is a point in time where you might wanna look at the private reverse and that's usually about 850. So whenever you come across a property that's about 850, whether they're buying it or someone's gonna refinance it, we're gonna to start to look at that private reverse mortgage to see if it's a better fit. Rates may be higher, but maybe they're getting more money. So trade-offs, right? And by the way, the calculator does not calculate those jumbos, private reverses, et cetera, only FHA. So if you get these products, if you have a client that maybe needs to buy a house that expensive, we have to calculate the loan amount. You have to email or text us. That's the calculator. Should help you both in what? Knowing if someone is gonna be able to refinance because you could use the app for that or knowing when someone is ready to purchase, if they have enough money for the down payment for a given purchase price. Okay, so download it, have some fun with it, it's free. Rob and I use it too. All right, so what we've done is we've just surveyed the reverse mortgage product and I can just sum it up, right? This is a loan that's really helping older homeowners with cash flow. Some homeowners that buy with the reverse or refinance with the reverse, Maybe they don't want to be like the other guy with the reverse that used it to the maximum benefit, never made a payment, borrowed as much as they could, and the balance went up, you know, pretty high. Because if you have a loan for 25 years and you borrowed all the money out, maybe that this person says, you know, I don't need all that equity in my home to help me every month. So maybe I can just make half a payment. I can buy a house, make half a mortgage payment, keep some in my pocket, and stop the balance going up as quickly. So you see, the reverse mortgage can be different for every person. So if somebody says I got a reverse and this is how I used it, you don't have to think that that's how uh, your client might use it. It's all customized according to the individual. It means different things to different people. Now that we know what the product can do, we sure would like you help you get some business with all these ideas, right? And so this was basically a three hour class in an hour and even a three hour class is hard to get all these concepts in. So how are you gonna take this to your farm, your clients and do what we just did? Well, I don't want you to have to do that. So what Rob and I have done is after 14 years of doing these loans and especially the last about nine years really working with realtors is we looked back at all of our history of doing loans and said, when a homeowner sold, what were they looking at 
or what information were they trying to get to before they listed that property? Because what do we want to do? We wanted to write marketing materials and newsletters for you, the realtor, that you could give to somebody who hasn't listed yet, but it looks like they may, and these marketing materials newsletters bring them to you. So that's what we did. And we give them to you to use for free. So Crystal is gonna show you how to get all that stuff for free on our website in just a few minutes. But now let's say that you've downloaded those items and you said, look, I can use these items and I wanna get them out to my borrowers. I wanna get them out to my clients. Well, what we wanna to do to help you with that is if you do think you have a prospect in your pipeline or somebody that you know, or someone you came across and you're like, I really wanna get these to them, but I don't got time to send it out, mail it. Thank you for letting me download them and put my name on them, but that's only half the battle, right? So you can use some of our other tools. We built a website called GoCortem, G-O-C-O-U-R-T-E-M. We'll mail them out for you for a limited number of clients, but if they're hot and you need to get something to them, hop into our website, put their name and uh, email in there. We'll mail stuff to them for about six months to help you bring them into your pipeline. That's Go Cortum. We just do it because, listen, we need to all work together and we're willing to help that little bit of marketing effort to make it happen. Now, we also have some other uh, softwares that we'll train you on that, by the way, we're gonna give you access to, like Title Pro 24 seven. What's that do? Hop onto our website. We have some videos where we use Title Pro. It's a data aggregation site. We looked, for instance, and you can do this too. It allows you to pull people in your area. We pulled some data around our office. We want to know who was older, who had a big mortgage payment. Yeah, and who uh, was retired, these types of things, because that was going to point to someone who may be low on cash, big mortgage payment, big house, who might need to do something, right? Maybe sell. So we'll show you how to use Tata Pro to get that data. And then Rob and I even take that data and we hopped in the car in our video and went and knocked on the door just so you could see that it's real. And guess what? We threw one more qualifier on there that Title Pro has. We asked for an older homeowner, big mortgage, not a lot of income, who was in tax default. Whoa, that poor person is probably hurting. You can do that. You can send them the newsletter. You know that that person might be the one that needs help. So anyways, we have all this stuff to try to help you guys because we do want to try to make this something that is just a little extra that you can do with what you're already doing. You're already talking to people, you're already out there. Now think about when you're talking to an older person who's a homeowner, some of the things that we talk about and you can listen. Now you know when someone asks for a reverse mortgage, they don't want a reverse mortgage. They are having cash flow issues and they own a home. That's for you and for us. Very important. By the way, go through your sphere. You gotta find out how people's spouses are doing, how people's parents are doing. One of the big things that we see is one spouse, when one spouse falls ill or passes away, that's an event where the homeowner that's behind or taking care of that spouse needs help. So that is your opportunity to help them and also possibly be the recipient of them needing to sell. What about using Title Pro, pulling some people right in your own neighborhood and going and seeing whose house is what in the worst shape that's older, that has a big mortgage, that has a tax default? Oh my gosh, that person is probably just basically screaming, I'm gonna to have to sell. And when they're older, use our newsletter. It speaks right to them, talks about how they can transfer taxes, how they can use an optional payment loan to purchase a house. Wow, Crystal, help them. If they wanted to have some fun and hop on our website and do this, help them and learn to uh, see what's in there and how we could do it. Then let's answer some questions. Let's do the giveaway, let's get done. Oh, we need you unmuted. Rob, unmute her please. Okay, thank you, Rob. Yes, so now I get to explain to you guys how you get access to everything Ryan was just talking about. So first thing is we have our course refresher. How do you get access to it? You know, and I don't know if this was mentioned, but when we condense a three hour class into a one hour class, there's inevitably going to be just some information that we have to leave out. For example, there was something called overfunding that you know we didn't even get to even mention at all in the class. So if you wanna learn about the, all these different things that we didn't talk about, Course Refresher is your best friend, six different videos, eight to 15 minute chunks. You just watch them at your own time, at your own pace. And it's located in our website, thereverseeducators com, which is one of two logins that you'll receive from us for free. So in the course, uh, in the reverseeducators.com, you'll be able to access 
course refreshers. Rob, if you want to go to the next slide, you'll be also be able to access complimentary downloadable marketing materials, such as these newsletters that we have here. Um, we've pre-written them, edited them. We have other flyers and posters and uh, not posters, but like door hangers and postcards that you can download and you can put in your information. Some of them you can put in a picture of your business card or your headshot at the back and fully customizable with free softwares and you'll be able to print them however you like. So that's also another feature that we offer you guys on our website. Uh, other thing is we have videos and tutorials on not only the different softwares that we've covered, such as Pro 24-7 and Remind, but we just have some other videos that we've made over the years. Um, there are for you to watch at your own time and pace, of course. You'll be, you'll be able to get access to them. Speaking of Pro 24-7, that's the next login that you will receive. So in a separate email, which will probably come today, if not today, tomorrow morning at the earliest, um, it will be a email from Title Pro themselves. It'll contain an activation link. You can go ahead and click it, and then you can get set up your password and get started to use the software. Um, same thing with our website. The website will be coming from me personally. Um, I'm gonna shoot you a message from my email and I'll just say, welcome, thanks for taking our class. Click the link here to set up your password and you're all good to go on our website. So once again, first login, the reverseeducators.com right there at the bottom. Second is um, Tatter Pro 24 seven, which we'll receive in a separate email. So with that being said, um, let's go ahead and uh, go over. I think we have just a one or two questions. Um, this is my, this is your last call for the giveaway, by the way, Rob, if um, while we're answering questions, if you can see if there's a way to um, make screen share so that everyone can do screen share. It's just for me and so I can pull the wheel up and then we'll be on our way. So let's get to that question we have from Don. Can you sell your current home, pay off the reverse mortgage for that home and apply, an apply for another reverse mortgage for a new home? Ryan, do you wanna answer that question? Yes, you can. Yeah, if you have a reverse mortgage home, sell it, pay it off. You can only have one reverse at a time, but there is no limit to how many you can do over your lifetime. Okay, perfect. Um, this wasn't a question, but Roshana, uh, she did bring up um, uh, tax rates and keeping, you know, a lot of older homeowners, they want to keep their old tax rate. I don't know if this is something maybe you guys want to touch upon just a little bit. Uh, I mean, that's just, you know, they're, they're trying to, um, it seems like a lot of individuals would like to take away Prop 13, et cetera. Prop 58, Prop 60, Prop 90, all these props that help us keep low taxes and pass them on to uh, kids and grandkids. So yeah, let's all pay attention to what we're voting for and you know protect our seniors and those low tax rates. And um, let's see, I thought I saw one other question. No, that's it. Okay, perfect. Uh, Rob, um, does it say you can, um, I can take over screen share for you? Well, how do I do that? I mean, I. I I if if you click on, okay, I see here. There you go. Who can um, share? I made you a co-host, Crystal, so you can go ahead and share your screen when Robert um, unshares his screen. All right, there you go. So now you should be able to share your screen. Perfect, thank you. I'm just going to add one more name here. All right, now I'm going to share my screen. Okay, do you guys see it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. So we're going to spin for a $25 Amazon gift card right now. Let's see who the lucky winner is. Let's see my name on that wheel. Congratulations, Dina Romero. Uh, you're the winner for our $25 Amazon gift card. So since you emailed me, um, I will contact you later. Um, so you can uh, get your prize. Other than that, guys, is there any last minute um, just takeaways you'd like to tell before we close this meeting? I did see uh, something from Watson pop up. Yeah, if you have situations, we're happy to go on appointments with you guys or meet your clients. If you have people that already have reverses and maybe you want to you know, position yourself to be the agent that gets the listing and so maybe the heirs need information. In other words, Rob and I are here to help not just if it means that we might get a reverse purchase. When you come across those clients that have reverses and you're, you got to figure out your positioning to help them and put, you know, and get the listing, hit us up too. We'll definitely uh, get back to you guys. If you email us, 
I can't say that we're going to get back right away. 24 hours, sometimes we need some time. Texting as well. We usually get back, text quicker. By the way, the quicker the question, the shorter, the easier and quicker we can get back. So some of those like really difficult situations, which you will find, need a little brain power time on those. But yes, that 888 number that Crystal showed on the slide before, we always try to have somebody manning that all the time. Not two in the morning, but you know, Monday through Sunday, it's a realtor hotline for you guys to call up and ask a question. And we want to try to always be available for you guys when you run across it and you need something right there with the client, we try to be there for you. Okay, great. I think Nancy, we're done. We're at 203. We awesome. Made it. <laughs> we made it. Yay. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for attending. We really appreciate it. Crystal put their phone number and their website in the chat. So please use Reverse Mortgage Educators as a resource. Um, they are affiliate members with us and big supporters of the association. So thank you so much, guys, for being here. Uh, Robert, Ryan, Crystal, for presenting all this information. Congrats, Dina, for your gift card. I wish it were me, but I can't enter. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. For more CBAR education classes, please visit cbarconnect.com and check out our education calendar for all our upcoming classes. As always, gentlemen, Crystal, it's been a pleasure. Thank you all so much and have, so, a, have a great day. Appreciate it. Have a good day, everybody.